Welcome to this June 27th edition of Off The Map Live. I am your host, Ben Licata. If you notice, I'm a little banged up. I just got back from a five-day motorcycle rally. Thanks, Steve Sanderson. Best birthday I've had in a while. Uh, on this episode, we'll be talking with Pepper and BJ Betts, and we'll also be checking in with our Grants Pass location uh, in Grants Pass, Oregon. See what's up on the old West Coast. Um, this show is brought to you by Free Business Webinar Day, which is coming up very soon, July 10th, with Gabe Ripley. Uh, he's going to be doing his Building a Great Tattoo Business Webinar free for Reinventing and Tattoo Now artist members. Um, check in with Tattoo Now and uh, get yourself one of the free Tattoo Now artist members. We're going to make a link available to you guys. Uh, brought to you by the Emerald Isle Tattoo Session. It's uh, a day of seminars and then a day of fucking off in Ireland with a bunch of cool people. Uh, that's July 25th and July 26th. Uh, we'll be giving away a ticket sometime soon. Um, possibly in two weeks when we talk with Jesse Smith. Uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, another, one of our, another one of our sponsors is Reinventing the Tattoo, now available in a digital form because that's the only way you can get it. Uh, the book is out of print. Um, if you go to reinventingthetattoo.com, you can sign up there, and it's updated frequently, has guest editors, and has so much knowledge, you probably can't take it all in. Um, Dax McClellan, Portrait Workshop Series, uh, he's one of our generous sponsors. Uh, tattoo Release Form App, if you haven't seen it, it's a digital release form app. It gets rid of all the paper. Uh, you can save some trees. It's made by a tattooer for tattooers. It's, we've been using it here in the shop for quite a while, and uh, everyone loves it. And we don't have files and cabinets full of useless paper anymore. Um, and as always, Off the Map Tattoo. Without Off the Map Tattoo, this show would not exist. We've got um, a studio right here in East Hampton. Um, I'm broadcasting to you probably for one of the last times from this space, because we're moving just down the street to a beautiful new location. It's an old theater, and we're gonna be having a uh, grand opening party on August 12th and 13th with live music. Awesome food from one of our partners. Um, you can talk to the Disappearing Ink people about maybe getting some laser tattoo removal. Um, you'll be able to check out the new space, say hi to all of our residents. It should be a blast. Uh, we've got some special tricks up our sleeves, so make sure you stop by August 12th and 13th. Uh, lastly, I want you to check out Adam France's new book, uh, available for pre-sale now. It's Proto-Science. And if you are in New York City on uh, July 14th, uh, he's doing a show with Guy Aitchison called Surface and Space. It's the day before the Empire State Tattoo Show. Um, we'll be down there to check it out. And uh, if you see me there, buy me a drink. I'm going to need it. Thanks. Um, so, most off the mappers will be traveling to that show, like I said, and also the Paradise Tattoo Gathering in October. Most of our artists are away in Tahoe right now. Um, make sure you check out the new space. It's going to be fun. Like I said, this episode, BJ Betts, Pepper, and Grants Pass. Uh, the last episode was Frank Lanatra, Josh Hosa, and Gabe Ripley. Uh, we were just putting the finishing touches on that today. That should be up on our YouTube page by Wednesday. Um, if we don't get it up there by Wednesday, make sure you check out a lot of the other great videos we have there. There are dozens and dozens and dozens. Um, subscribe to our channel. You'll get updates when we upload new stuff. All right, uh, on our future episode, July 11th, we'll be talking with Jesse Smith, as I mentioned before. He's going to be talking about his upcoming convention and some of his experiences with the most recent Ink Master Revenge uh, season that was just on. He doesn't know I'm going to ask him about it, but I'm going to ask him about it. So we're going to run a few ads, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk with Pepper. See you in just a bit. What is a webinar? It's your chance to up your game and improve yourself with new techniques in art, in business, and tattooing. Webinars are streaming professional development seminars taught by the masters of their craft that you can watch in the comfort of your home, your studio, or even on the go on your mobile device. If you have a stable internet connection, you can stream a webinar. Here at Tattoo Now, we continually produce high-quality video presentations from top artists and business people. 
Our catalog includes hours of education from greats like Guy Aitchison, Bob Tyrell, DJ Betts, Jeff Gogway, Russ Abbott, James Kern, Tommy Helm, Ian McCown, Kelly Doty, Remer Oriana, and more all the time. These professional artists share their years of experience to accelerate your path and help you become more successful. Fill up on high-octane brain fuel now with the Tattoo Now webinar. Do you want to bring your career to the next level? Then webinars from Tattoo Now can help you do that. Hey, we're back. Uh, hey, Pepper, can you hear me? Hey, yes. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. What's new? Oh, man. <laughs> What's not new? <laughs> um, we just uh, had a fundraiser here at our shop uh, for the local no-kill shelter uh, called SAFE, uh, Saving Animals from Euthanasia. Uh, we just did this uh, this past weekend. Um, pretty successful. We've got over uh, 300 pounds of food so far for the animals. Um, and I think we're doing pretty good uh, as far as different cash donations. So, so yeah, so that's new. Um, we, uh, we had actually stopped by there and uh, we noticed, um, you know, that they seem to be in need of uh, some help. Uh, they currently have a thrift store out front and they're using that to try to like help raise money uh, to help the animals. And um, we also, well, I mean, as most of us in the community, I mean, we just love animals so much, but with work and, you know, with uh, everything, you just can't go and adopt them all. So we figured out uh, why not do uh, what we do best and, uh, you know, do some good with it. So you recently just got a new website update from us here at Tattoo Now. Yes. You like it? And it's amazing. And oh. we love it. Good, because if it was terrible, I would, I'd feel bad about asking about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. We absolutely love it. I'm um, so happy. Um, you know, just how easy it is to navigate. Um, I like how everything's right there. Uh, we've been getting a really good response from different people that have been using it. Um, also, uh, some clients that had seen the old website and what we had, uh, they've also expressed how much they really like the new website. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good to hear. So what prompted you to, to, uh, to want to update? Um, well, with the shop, uh, you know, the name is Unify. Uh, we were Unity, but we uh, ran into some issues. Uh, but, um, you know, with Unify, uh, we wanted to bring everybody, you know, in the shop uh, together as one um, versus having, you know, Pepper Tattoos and then having Bart Andrews and then having the shop. Um, so this way it's just so much easier to manage um, and also with the emails and uh, for updates and everything. So Bart is your significant other, correct? Absolutely. So how is it working with someone uh, that you're so close with? Is it easy? Is it hard? Uh, um, I mean, I could go on. <laughs> uh, well, it is, a, it is an interview um, show, so... You can you, feel free. <laughs> but there has to be uh, plenty more time for BJ. <laughs> but um, no, it's a uh, you know what it 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 has its pros, it has its cons. Um, so far, uh, everything's been really great. We're really compatible, um, especially even though we do certain things that are similar uh, stylistically. Um, there are certain things that he does that are not my strong points, and vice versa. So we're really able to work well as a team. And balance uh, each other out. So it's it, as far as that goes, you know, it's pretty good. It's a little interesting, you know, seeing somebody all day and then uh, you know going home <laughs> and seeing them still. <laughs> hey, but, look, uh, there he is, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Can't get away from but, that. Um, Can't get away from that handsome guy. Yeah. No. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Honestly, it's it's pretty good. You know, it's um just being in the industry for so long. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing at me, but um, you know, it's a a, a point of difficulty uh, is, is when you're with somebody who's not in the industry, they just really don't understand what it is that we do and how important it is to us. And um, it's been really great having somebody who shares that same passion 
and um, is very understanding, you know, like, hey, I need to work late on, on this piece or, um, you know, I'm trying to come up with different ideas, you know, what, what do you think, you know, instead of like, oh, well, whatever, uh, and just kind of brushes you off. So, so it's great. Yeah, I've recently talked to some, uh, some folks who expre have expressed interest in wanting to become tattooers, but they've uh, wanted to more add it as a skill set and as a job, and I don't think a lot of people, younger people, understand that it's not a job, you know, it's more of a life. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's um, a lot of people, just like what you said, they just don't get it, you know, they think it's something you can just pick up and put down or just walk away from, or, um, you know, uh, even still in the past, you know, I've had issues where uh, people would get their feelings hurt, you know, that I uh, chose tattooing over them, or they would even make comments such as, oh, it's like I have to make an appointment with you. It's like, well, you kind of do because tattooing uh, takes precedence over, over you as far as this goes, and I need to work on designs, I need to work on my art, and, um, you know, then a relationship. Right. I mean, that's why tattooers end up hanging out with other tattooers, you know, all the time, because it's the only people that really get it. Um, Absolutely. So for some of the people that might not be familiar with uh, your, you in particular, how did you break into tattooing? Where did you begin? Uh, I started um, when I was 17. I uh, actually um, took my apprenticeship my senior year of high school. Uh, so for uh, part of the year, you know, I would go to school uh, part of the day, and then the other day I would go uh, to the studio to learn. Um, and then once I graduated was around the same time that I turned 18, so I was actually be able to uh, start as an artist then. Uh, what was the environment like? Where were you, what kind of shop are you working in? Um, I feel like the, the best way to describe the shop that I was at is it was... Um, a street shop with a desire to be custom. Uh, I guess that's the best way. Um, everybody there, they were very nice. Um, I did not have a horrible hazing uh, like some of the apprentices that I had seen, but they definitely weren't really easy on me either. Um, anything and everything that was given p to me to do, you know, I did have to do it right. I did have to be uh, efficient, you know. Um, so it was good. I did. Uh, I learned a lot there. And then uh, throughout my travels, um, I was able to work with different people. And um, I was very fortunate to be able to watch and uh, learn from them as well. Do you have any art training outside of tattooing? Um, not so much. Um, I've taken a few classes uh, here or there, um, but really nothing uh, intense. Um, like I took a, an oil painting class. Um, for a few weeks, um, but really that uh, that was about it. So your paintings are pretty great. How did you just you're basically self-taught? Um, no, uh, also when I was younger, uh, I was in a uh, 4-H, and uh, one of the women there, uh, in I know, right? That's awesome. No, <laughs> she uh, introduced me. <laughs> See, well, <laughs> she introduced me to oil painting, you know, so uh, she would just show me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, different uh, uh, tricks and, and things to do uh, with it. And um, I just uh, continued with oils uh, ever since. Cool. Uh, is your shop full now? Uh, are you looking for any artists? Um, at this point, we're not looking for any artists. Uh, we are open to having different guest artists. Um, we are somewhat looking for a piercer, but it would really uh, have to be the right person. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, at this point, we're full. What's your, uh, what's your normal hiring process like? Do you, you know, um, do you have a normal hiring process? What is it like to, when, if someone wanted to work at your shop, how would they start that process? Um, definitely, you know, uh, come in and uh, talk to us, you know, uh, in person, especially. We've had some people um, that claim to be in the area, but they didn't even set foot in the shop. They would just email, you know, and that's, that's not right. You know, you definitely need to come in, uh, meet with us, see if we gel. Um, you know, definitely check out portfolio, uh, learn about their past, you know, how did they get started, why did they choose uh, to tattoo, um, their inspiration for it. Um, also, you know, speaking uh, maybe with some of the other places uh, that they've worked. Um, definitely, uh, we like people that do art also, obviously, <laughs> you know, so would love to see any uh, additional artwork, you know, aside from uh, tattoos and sit down, talk with them. We would talk about it, see about getting a, a really good feel and just kind of go from there. Great. Um, do you travel much? Not as much as I would like. No. 
Are you traveling? <laughs> are you, are you no. traveling this year at all? Or have you traveled at all this year? Well, absolutely. Uh, I'm coming out to see you guys uh, for Black and Gray Week. Oh, sweet! Super excited. Um, we're doing uh, well. So we were supposed to go see the very last Black Sabbath show out in uh, Arizona. Uh -huh. Pretty excited about it. And then uh, they decided to tour some more I mean, after they already said that the show out there was going to be their last show. In typical Black Sabbath <laughs> fashion. I mean, I think they've played uh, I, four or five final tours in their career, you know? I, I know, but I mean, they're getting older, and I guess I just thought, you know, that they were serious <laughs> about it this time. <laughs> so uh, so we're going out there uh, for that, and uh, then uh, we'd also like to come, uh, come out that way uh, in October. Oh, for Paradise? Mm hmm Great. Cool. So what's uh what's your favorite convention that you'd go that you've been to? Oh man. Um Oh man. That, it's hard because there's different parts of um different conventions that uh, I've liked. Um I guess uh I really liked uh going to Tatula Palooza, which was down in Miami. Um, that was a good show to go do, but it, it, it's hard. Uh, I really haven't been at a show that I just didn't like being at. Oh, that's cool. That's good. So, do you have any tattoos on you that you regret getting? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 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 You're talking about laser removal, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just curious. Um, people want to know, you know. Oh, um, yeah, uh, back, um, when, uh, I had first started and, uh, they, you know, deemed me, uh, worthy enough to be an artist, uh, you know, it was obviously very slow, uh, just waiting for walk-ins, and, um, there was this, uh, wizard, uh, that was on the wall, it was a Flash, uh, wizard, and, uh, I kept thinking, wow, that would be so cool to tattoo, and, uh, then I realized, hey, I could tattoo this on me, and, th and then I could tattoo it, so I don't have to wait for somebody to get it. And so I did it, and um, it's still there. Yeah? How's and uh, it's how's it look? Uh, pretty good for a, a first-year tattoo. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's big. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really? Can you, can you email me a picture of it so I can add it into the post-edit? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? I, I can do that. I think the saving grace is, is it's... Um, pretty solid uh, considering I did it um, about like 15 years ago and uh, since I've decided I did not want a wizard on my shin anymore I've been blasting it in the sun so it's, uh, <laughs> it's still it's Try, a pretty good tattoo. <laughs> trying to get rid of it but you can't get rid of it. Um, have you done, no. have you done it any on other people that you regret doing? Oh man. Um, looking Looking back, um, I guess I can't, I can't really say like I regret doing it. I just wish that I had known uh, better as far as certain things, you know, whether it be uh, the piece should have been larger or even uh, with uh, proportions um, years ago, like years ago, like first year. Um, I had drawn this angel and uh, I didn't really use the best reference. And then, you know, upon uh, looking at my older pictures uh from my portfolio years later i realized how off like the feet were like she's got like little itty bitty feet and uh, <laughs> so things like that you know like um i i've always tried my hardest and done the best that i could with every tattoo but at at that point with my skill level and knowledge that was the best i could do so i guess um yes and no so if you had one piece of advice for an apprentice tattooer that's apprenticing right now what would that piece of advice be um, if, if I were to talk to someone who was apprenticing, I would say definitely focus, uh, on your art skills. Um, and I'm not even saying worrying about tattooing, just about the basics, um, you know, color theory, um, you know, a flow balance, just everything, uh, that they could, um, because that'll really, uh, come into, uh, play and be very helpful when they do tattoos. Right on. Well, hey, thanks for chatting with us. Um. Is there, anything, is there anything you want to add before we go? You know, I'm not sure. You've got me thinking about this wizard. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I want to see it. Oh, and I, I guess, wait, wait, I guess the other thing uh, would be is, is when they're an apprentice and they're at that point when they first become an artist and then they realize, hey, I have the power to give myself a tattoo to just really uh, think about the word permanence <laughs> 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 and what it means and lifelong and, and all that. So. <laughs> well, that's great advice. <clears throat> well, thanks, thanks for chatting with us. And yeah, totally. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. I always love talking with you. Well, I love speaking with you all, too, and I'm excited to see that new spot. Yeah, I'm excited to finish it. I was actually there putting up drywall today. All right. Yeah, so. All right, we'll see you soon. All right, sounds good. Take Bye, guys. E take it easy. And uh, we'll be right back uh, after a couple words from our sponsors. Tattoo artists are power creators, not power administrators. Save time, money, and trees with Tattoo Release Forms app. Your client will photo his ID, enter personal information, information about the tattoo, health information, initial legal clauses, and sign his name. When the client is finished, you can make session notes and choose inks and needles from the most popular brands and configurations. Preview the form, sign it, and hit upload. The form lands on a secure cloud in seconds as a printable PDF. If you're at a convention or without Wi-Fi, TRF will automatically upload the forms next time you're online. Return clients can simply search for themselves, check to make sure all the information is correct, and sign again. Done in seconds. Download Tattoo Release Forms app from the Apple App Store for free and enjoy 25 free forms. Also available in the UK, Canada, and Australia. Hey, we're here with BJ Betts. BJ, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you doing, man? Good, man. How are you guys? I'm trying to get some headphones in, man. Might make it a little, a little easier for the conversation here. Hold on one sec. Okay. I can hear you great. Oh, cool. All right. I mean, yeah, I think this works. If you can, if you can hear me okay, and it sounds okay on your end, uh, it might get a little echoey for you, because I yeah I added Max to the conversation. How's Max, it going, BJ? Maximilian Rother, do you know Max? Hey, man, how are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, man. Great, great. Thanks, man. So Max has been experimenting with black ink for the last year. Yes. Yeah. Different different blacks. Um, Trying to get a consistent gradient from dark to light. It's always the problem. Everything winds up in a mid-tone range more often than not. It does, yeah. yeah. So what's your process when you're trying to decide on which blacks you're using? I know you, you work on ink. You make inks. Um, I do, man. I have, a, uh, I have my own black that I've been working on for quite a while. It's out in the market now called Formula 23. Um, it was something I've been using and developing at my shop for a lot of years, and finally, um, after a lot of years of my friends trying it, and you know, I, I, I bring it around when I travel, and a lot of times I, I do a guest spot at my shop, and I'd leave it there and kind of forget about it, and they'd call me up and say, uh, you know, hey man, you left a bottle of black here. Um, I used it, and now uh, I, I need more. <laughs> you know, which that wasn't the, that wasn't the point at all. You know, yeah. the, the point was you're supposed to send it back to me, but um. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's good marketing. Yeah, the thing the thing is, man. Yeah, so you know, I, I worked on my own blends for a while, um, and see, for me, when I first started tattooing, um, Pelican and Talons were basically they were basically it, right? So um, I needed something, and you know, Pelican was no longer wasn't available for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and Talons, sometimes the the way it healed, I, I just I wanted to do something something darker. I wanted something that um, that ran very fast, like the old Pelican did, and um, I finally I finally got something that I liked that was my own mix, and uh, was real happy with it. Yeah, because I've been double boiling and, Pelican for a while, and uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, trying to get that smoothness that Pelican's got, yeah, but then also trying to get that richness um, that Pelican kind of sure, lacks sure. when it heals up. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, man, and that and that's one of the exactly is one of the reasons that I wanted to 
wanted to start doing my own and putting it out in the market like that was because, um, you know, I feel like I've, I've achieved it. And, um, you know, I also wanted something that, that wasn't on the, when it went, the, the, when a gray healed, it wasn't on the cool, it was more on the cool side than the warm side that had that kind of bluish, that's, you know, that's the classic um, black heel. and gray. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And, and you know, Pe uh, Pelican was that way. Talons isn't really that way. Um, it, it was more on the, uh, on the warm reddish kind of side, you understand. And, um, you know, man, I, I just, after, like I said, after a lot of trial and error, I got it, I got it to where it was extremely dense in black, but also, also, um, it was, <clears throat> it was, uh, substantially thinner than the, the, I don't know, so-called like extra dark and triple blacks that are on the market these days that are like toting themselves as the blackest of the black. Yeah, it is probably really dark, but it's super gummy and like kind of clogs up your tube. And I noticed that if you're trying them, man, that they, they, they can't keep up. If you tattoo pretty fast, they just, they, they don't keep up. So I guess that's the long way around the answer of, of the, of the gray problem. But, um, and I, I think that for me, man, it, it's, it's really the consistency of having that, that kind of, you know, drop method or even potentially pre-mixing them in the, in your, in a, in a, in a bottle before you even start tattooing. So when you're doing black and gray, how do you, do you, do you use pre-mix? Do you have your own pre-mix set or are you, are you just making it, doing it? I, I do. Yeah. I, I have my own mix based on, based with, with my, uh, the, the black I've developed, um, using that as a base for the, uh, for the gray wash. Um, and I, you know, man, I, I've heard a bunch of different things over the years as far as using, uh, you know, using a, a few drops of green soap or a few drops of glycerin uh, or a few drops of witch hazel. It kind of takes out the redness. You can you can really see that 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 mid tone and the and the lighter tones more. Um, but man, for me, it, it, I haven't really found that to be a necessity. Um, now, you know, if I'm if I'm in a convention, and I don't I don't have my own mix with me or whatever, I just, you know, I just forget to bring it or whatever the case is, um, then I'll, I'll use the, the, the drop method, um, you know, but, but just to make sure, you know, I know which one's which that way, and I'll, and I'll use it to the very end until it's time, you know, for that, like, if the, if the ink cap that I'm looking for is the, you know, two drops of black and the rest water, I'll use that until it's completely done, and before I fill it up, that way I know 100%, that's the one that, gave me that, that, that gray tone I was after. Have, um, what's this about Listerine? So I've, I've heard some of like the old guys using Listerine um, uh -huh. like in their gray wash. Like, what is the yeah, purpose yeah, of again, doing? Yeah, again, I think it's more just, yeah, oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, what's the purpose of using Listerine in gray wash or creating gray wash using Listerine? Um, I, I think it's more to give it that tone, you know, even though it's, it's, it's only a lighter, you know, there's, there's either a, you know, a blue or, or the old school kind of yellowish golden color Listerine. Um, when I first started tattooing that, that was the, that was the trick that I heard too from, a, I've, I've been tattooing a little over 20 years and that was the, that was the trick I heard too, was that it'll give it, although it's, you know, it's only a little bit of color and it gets diluted down, but it'll still give it that like that golden warmer kind of a kind of healing but man for me i think it's more of the of the alcohol content that was in the that was in the listerine and you know that mixing mixing ink you know i mixed ink a lot of years and they used it and, and i really didn't find any real particular reason to be honest other than it was a uh, it was a, an antiseptic um and that prevented the bacteria from growing in the ink is 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 what i was aware of okay what else you got for him Oh, jeez. <laughs> I got tons of Fire away, man. Um, so how long, how long were you developing the ink for? I've been using that ink for about, about uh, a little, around 10 years, I guess, my own mix. What were some of the challenges of bringing and, a, uh, a product to market? Like, what, what was some of your difficulties, like, trying to get a product out there? Uh, consistency was, for number one, man. The, fir the first and foremost for me, it's... You know the thing when somebody cracks open a bottle of of you know not and not only black but whatever color you know they want to make sure that 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 yellow that golden color that red color that your favorite green your favorite blue is consistency that 
consistently that color um, when they open up a new bottle every time and they order it. They want to make sure that that is, in fact, legit. And it, they, they know that every time, man, that's it. And one of the other problems for me, well, it wasn't really a problem. I, just, I think one of the only concerns for me was um, the, the fact that the, the European Union um, does not allow any, any, um, any carbon-based black on the market. Really? Completely illegal in, in Europe, which a lot of people aren't aware of that I'm probably shedding a lot of light on. Um, and so, you know, for me, that was another, that was another thing that uh, I needed to make sure that um, my black wasn't a carbon-based black. And as it turned out, it, it, it never was from the very beginning, you know, um, just based on my mix. It wasn't something that was, uh, that was a carbon base. So that, that, that worked out, and, there, and ultimately it wasn't even a concern after all. But that was one of the things. But I, I didn't even know that, it, that my original mix wasn't a carbon base until I did a little research, did some testing on it, and as it turned out, it was great. Is there a difference in healing Number and tone with carbon based versus non-carbon based blacks? Like is that yeah, I think the carbon is going to give you more of that of just what it says. It's going to give you that more of a pencil-y kind of a of a tone, you know, the the, the carbon tone. Whereas mine um, is just a little bit of a richer gray, a richer black, and um, you know, everybody that's used it can can attest to it that it's a uh, it doesn't have a a tone a healed tone like any other thing on the market right now. Do you find yourself using like a particular method in putting in your ink versus other inks? Like using no, a sweeping all, method or like packing the gray wash or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I like to, again, I'm not, I don't want to sit on a soapbox and talk about my product, the whole thing at all, because it's not all about, it's, it's definitely not about that, man. But um, I, I'd say my, you know, a, a gray or, or any gray that I've used previously, um, okay. I think that's that, feathering it out between like the black and, in the, and into the gray, into the midtones. I'd say, I, you know, I approach it as if, Maybe not with the same um, aggressiveness as I would pack in some color, but I think that's it. That is what gives those those rich gray tones that actual tone is the fact that it is packed in and, and saturated into the skin. And um, I remember talking to Philip, well, having a conversation in the same kind of uh, booth with Philip Lou about how he gets those big gradient, like super smooth airbrushy type of gray. And that's what he said, man. He said he packs it in there as if it was, you know, uh, the color red or blue or any other color. But in fact, it is gray. You know, and my, my questions were like, well, man, how do you know on those super light tones, how do you know it's going to be in the skin? How do you know it's going to look that way when it heals? And he told me the, the trick to, the, to that is if you see any kind of uh, color in that wash at all, like if, it's, if it's, you know, one step up from water, if there's a, a slight amount of gray, then you're going to see it in the skin. And that, that, that rang true, and that helped me out tremendously. Awesome. That's a Thanks. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah, that yeah. is right there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, BJ. Have a good night. Bye, Absolutely. Max. Adios. Thanks for sitting All in. All right, brother. Max was sitting in here, so uh, like I said, he's been dealing with blacks for a while, and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity for him to get some insight. So that's why I brought him awesome, into the show. Man. Cool. So you said you've been tattooing, what, 20 years almost? 20, over 20? A little over, yeah. I did my very first tattoo in like the very end of 94. Um, but I started working at a shop. Uh, I, got, I was in the military for about, about nine years. And uh, I got out in early 97 and uh, was working at a shop a little before I got out. I knew I was going to be getting out of the military. And uh, I started working at a shop prior to me getting out and then just went full time uh, the day after I got out. So I got out of the military on a Wednesday and I was in the shop Thursday morning. Uh, going for it. So uh, how has tattooing changed in the last 20 years for you? Um, what have you seen change? Um, reference material, man, the internet, you know, really. <laughs> I think it all boils down to that and, and the fact that like then, man, I, I remember, you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm some old school dude, some old school tattooer, but man, I will say that back in the day um, prior to prior to the internet, um, you know, man, I, I think seeing reference for me, um, we're, we're, we had magazines, we had to actually do research. I had, for me, it was like going to tattoo conventions and tracking down these tattooers that I wanted to get tattooed by and asking a lot of questions while I was getting tattooed and looking at like, you know, grabbing, grabbing everybody's business card 
looking at like watching people draw, watching people tattoo. And that was it, man. And buying, buying up every bit of flash I could get my hands on and, you know, just, just calling people and, and asking a bunch of questions. And, you know, with the, with the advent of the internet and the accessibility of, of Google and Pinterest and everything else, you know, that essentially is the new flash, man. You know, and it, I, I think it's, I, I really don't think there's a, a, a reason to get a bad tattoo these days, man. With, with as much information as out there, you, you don't even, you shouldn't, you shouldn't get a bad tattoo. I know, and still thousands of people are doing it every day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely, man, yeah. So do you think going yes. to conventions and getting tattooed by artists that you respect, do you think that's still an important part of it? Absolutely, I do. Yeah, 100%, man, because, you know, and I, I've had this conversation with a bunch of people that, that put out, you know, sketchbooks, lettering books, what have you. And I think ultimately, man, um, people still want to get the original, you know? Like, they, there might be a, you know, a, a Big Knees copy or, or a BJ copy or whatever the case may be, or a Jack Rudy copy or some other original guys. But, man, people still want that. They don't want a version of one of those aforementioned people, man. They want the real deal. Um, and I think it's really important, man. And originally, like, I remember going to get tattooed at a convention and after seeing these people in, in tattoo magazines and thinking to myself, like, you know, like, I never got tattooed by Guy, but for example, like Guy Aitchison, seeing how next level his stuff was, right? And then seeing it in the magazine all those years, and then you go to a convention, and, and there it is. There he is. And not only is he there, but he's there for you to watch him work, and he's there to answer some questions if you're not a pain in the ass. And he's there, you know, it's like, it's like watching, listening to your favorite band CDs all these years, and you go to their show, and, and you meet him, and you can talk to him. It's like, the magazine came alive, right? All the tattoo magazines just came to life when you go to a convention. And here's these, here's these artists that are, that are the, 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 the next level people that you've looked at their stuff for all these years and here they are, man, you know? Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, do you still buy magazines? I know that the digital age has kind of taken <laughs> over, but do you still buy magazines? I I do, man. I do, and, and um, I, I think there's something still for me that's that's substantial about having that tangible thing. You know what I mean? Where you can just look at it, and and I, you know, I, I love, I still love reading the articles, man. And although, you know, there is something to be said about the accessibility of just going on your phone on the, you know, on the airplane or in a hotel room and reading up, or you, you know, wherever you're at, waiting for a, a flight, a train, or whatever the case may be, and you know, between appointments, and you can just like flip through somebody's stuff, but. I, I think Instagram covers a lot of those bases for me, and I, I still enjoy the actual copy, you know, and, and reading, reading what people have to say, man, versus, I know you can read it online too, man, but I think just like in print, there's something still so important and valuable about the, about the print, for me, that is. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know, with the digital age, you kind of curate what you see, you know, you follow the people you want to follow, sure. and... You, you go research, you try to find people. But with a magazine, it's just presented to you in whatever order the editor thought, you know, that he thought was best. So you, you might get exposed to something that you would have never seen before in a magazine. Something you might not even have thought you had interest in, but just happened to be there because you right. picked it up because Paul Booth was on the cover, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I love man. magazines. And just, like you said, the tangible thing about being able to flip through a magazine is uh, a lot more satisfying than scrolling with your thumb. Um, oh, I, for sure. I mean, yeah. obviously, the digital, digital age has its purpose. We're, uh, we're streaming online right now, you know. Huh? But <clears throat> I think magazines are pretty red. Yeah, man. Um, you've worked with a lot of large, <laughs> large brands that want to kind of tap into the energy of tattooing, um, you know, kind of uh, piggyback on with tattooing. Um, how's that yeah. worked out? Has it been a good experience for you? It has been, man, 100%. Um, I, I've, I've worked with, uh, with, with Nike, with Adidas, with, with Puma, with New Balance, um, pretty much all the, all the, the, the major brands. Um, and I'll tell you, man, it, it's, it's a blessing and a curse because initially, I think the, the very first like, major brand I worked with was Puma. And I had my own, I had my own line of, uh, of footwear and did a bunch of apparel with them. And, and it, was, it was an amazing experience. And I think Part of the amazing experience was because of the, the people that were involved. And I happened to be friends with, with uh, the guys first. And then it was kind of like, oh, man, maybe we should try and work on this collaborative effort uh, for some footwear. 
Um, I've been I've been into into sneakers uh, since I can remember. Um, you know, since since the first Air Jordan one back before that even in 1985. So I mean, I'd say even pre 1985, I. I was always into sneakers, so that worked out worked out good. And um, but you know, anyway, the gift and the curse part is that for us, for us as, as artists and tattooers in particular, um, when somebody comes into the shop, especially I, I started tattooing in a, in a walk-in type of a of an atmosphere, and it was like that for a lot of years. You know, where there wasn't the specialization that's going on now. You know, when somebody came in, they wanted a tattoo. It, it was like first and foremost, it was a tattoo. Like, oh, I want to get a tattoo, and oh, what do you want to get? Oh, I want to get a name, right? So it wasn't really people coming in like, who's the best at lettering? It was just, I want to get a tattoo, and that was it. And everybody at the shop could, could do whatever walked in. You know, you can do, go from uh, some lettering to, a, to a, you know, something Japanese to something tribal, and it was one after the other. So you better be proficient in everything is what, how I was taught. And I try and promote that as well within, you know, whenever I have a chance to get on a soapbox and talk about, how I think the state of tattooing is these days. That's one of the things that I think, um, you know, should be a, an important staple in everybody's career. But anyway, um, I think, like I said, because of my work, in, my, my walk in type of a, a shop experience, you know, when somebody comes in and they want that, they want that wizard or they want that tattoo, they want that thing. Now they don't want to make an appointment for later. They want to get it now as a walk in. And I think, you know, working with these companies, I was so used to doing things kind of on demand. Um, and I, I didn't have I didn't have an, an art department to get five different approvals. It was me. I was the approval. And so when I would send these requests, um, the completed requests to these companies, they'd be like, they couldn't believe that it was only an hour, and, and they they had some artwork or two hours, and they had some artwork. They're used to having it run through five different channels before they they got a sketch or got an approval. And so I think that that was one of the things that was very attractive to them in hiring me. That's the gift part. Now the curse part is, is they, they, they want it every time like that. They don't, you know, they don't want to hear about your, your dog is sick or, or you know, you're, you're running late. They don't want to hear that. They're, they're used to, to that every single time. You know. Are you still doing that kind of stuff? Absolutely, all the time, man. All the time. And I, I, I'm not. Absolutely, I'm working. I'm working. Uh, I'm kind of in, in talks with, with Converse right now on a, on a, on a really, really big project. Um, and we had a, we had a, uh, they worked think magazine recently. Uh, I, I, I curated these, uh, these converts, the, the, the new Chuck Taylor that they just redid. I got them on I, my I, feet I, right I, now. Yeah. I'm wearing yeah, those, the, I'm wearing the Chuck, the Chuck Taylor twos on my feet right now. <laughs> right. Awesome, man. Yeah. So they, um, so they, they had a, a, a thing with, um, with Ink magazine, uh, where they had, you know, wanted to have 10 artists, 10 tattooers. From different cities, San Francisco, New York, L.A., uh, Miami, Chicago, things like that, and um, kind of had me curate getting some of the uh, some of the artists that uh, that that, I, in my opinion, are 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 you know leading the pack, so to speak, and had them customize some sneakers. So I did that with Converse. I'm also working on a, like I said, another big project uh, with them now, where I'll have my own you know my own products coming out uh, next year, probably. Uh, still trying to get all that worked out. What's, uh, what's but yeah, the, man, it's it's great. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you as, if they're interested in products that you're working on or your ink sets or things like that? Yeah, yeah. So I guess either my Instagram, my Twitter, or directly through my email. Uh, my Instagram, Twitter, and I guess my Facebook is all just my name, just BJ Betts. And uh, Twitter and Instagram is, you know, at BJ Betts. And uh, my email address can be found on every, every one of those uh, sites I just mentioned. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, you got any traveling coming up? I do, man. I have uh, Palm Springs in, in two more weeks, uh, or a week and a half, or whatever it is. Palm Springs, California. Uh, palm trees and tattoos thing, I believe it's called. Um, I have uh, Justin Weatherholt's convention coming up oh, in, Pagoda uh, City. in August. You're going Pagoda to Pagoda City? City? Yeah, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, try yeah, to I'm take up. my motorcycle out there and visit for a day or two. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's good. This is the third year he's having. It. I've the uh, third year I'll be going. Yeah, it's great, man. It's a it's a great show. Um, you know, Justin has a has a, a an amazing audience. It, it's it has a really old school type of feel, man, where everybody knows everybody, and it's just it's just great artists that are there. It's it's a it's a great thing that he that 
it took a, that, that, that convention was great for a lot of years when it was done by another guy and um, it kind of, it, for whatever reason, I have no idea, but kind of died down for a couple of years and, or maybe it didn't happen for a couple of years. I, I don't remember. Um, but I took a few years off just from the convention things for a while, man. And, and now, um, you know, back on it, it's, 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 uh, you know, I, I needed that break for sure. But now, man, if we go to see, it's great. After that, um, I'm trying to work some things out now and, and make sure I can make it to, you know, to Gabe's show, to the, the one, uh, the, the art gathering. And that's in what, October, yeah? The, yeah, the Paradise Tattoo Gathering is in October. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. So I have that. I mean, I have like London, September, and um, I, I, a couple other things, but no, normal stuff. I'm, I've cut way back, man, just trying to do the ones that are. That are that are really really good or put on or that are put on by people who I, I really really like and 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 respect that they're still doing a really great thing for the tattoo community. Well, I really appreciate you chatting with us. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, no, man, that was it. Um, I, I'm always I'm always honored to, to to be talking with you, man, and I'm always honored to, to to be on the show. And I'm available anytime, man. Anytime you need me, I'm around. I. I like I said, I think it's a great thing. The tattoo education part is, is phenomenal. You know, obviously, Gabe puts on a, a, a great show and has a great, a great product and, a, and, a, and just an amazing, you know, thing that he, that he can bring to the, uh, the industry, man. And I think it's a well-needed thing. Uh, he can hear you. I'm sure he appreciates that. Um, I, oh, awesome. I've got one question for you. I've recently learned, yeah, started man. to learn how to tattoo. Um, if you had one piece of advice really? for, yeah, for an apprentice, what would it be? Okay, well, before I answer that, what seems to be the thing that you're struggling with the most, right, so far? Right now? Time. <laughs> like, trying to find okay. time to so, 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 time to sleep, time to... Something that you can't buy, right. Yeah, you know, uh, that's really it. Time to draw. I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to find okay. a way to balance everything, you know? It's tough, yeah, man. I mean, you basically have to eat, leave, and live and, and sleep and breathe this stuff, man. And I think, um, I think number one, like I was saying back to what I said earlier in regards to, um, knowing, you know, different aspects of tattooing. Only thing I, I'd say, man, for sure is don't, don't try and, and specialize in, in something, man, just because, you know, you, you like doing that kind of style, you know, man, what, what if somebody doesn't, what if somebody comes in and they don't want that style, then what are you going to do? Are you, are you not going to do it? Are you going to pass on the tattoo? and not potentially feed your family because it's something that you aren't familiar with. So I think building up your, your internal and mental Rolodex of imagery um, is, is extremely important. You know, once, you know, draw a skull and draw it from every angle. And then once you, once you think you've got it, you know, relatively comfortably, then do it, do it with a rose, do it with an eagle, do it with, uh, you know, a panther, do it with things that are, that are, that are the staples of the, of the tattoo industry, you know. Roses, hearts, names, banners, things like that, man. That that are gonna that are gonna be your your go-to for everything, you know. And, you know, you don't need to add 15 colors to a pinup girl, and you know, study study the study the uh, the the masters or people that you love their stuff. You know, you love their stuff for a reason, whether it's because it's it's probably good, but number one, and number two, because it appeals to you for various reasons, whether it's pleasing to the eye. Whether it's something you can relate to because it's a style that you either have on you or you kind of uh, aspire to be. But first and foremost, man, get the basics down. Um, you know, there's not much needle making going on, but like, man, I, I, I learned how to make needles, learned how to mix pigment, and all these things that for, for some unknown reason, if the government decides to, to shut all this shit down, man, what are we going to do? Are you going to be able to, what, what if you can't buy any pre made needles anymore? What if there's some weird embargo? And we can't bring stuff from China. And you have to make all these things on your own. Then what? You know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be stuck. I won't be. Yeah. You know, learn right. Your, yeah, learn, absolutely. Learn the tools of the trade, man. You know, learn your, learn your tattoo machines. If something isn't running right, learn why that is. You know, it, it's, a, it's a long process. It's, you know, it's not just a, a six-month or a one-year thing. That's why apprenticeships are traditionally done how they're done, right. in my opinion. You yeah. know, and I think there's there's... There's a re there's a there's a reason there's a method to the madness. If you're you know cleaning the shop or, or scrubbing tubes or you know or cleaning the toilets or whatever, I mean that all has a that all has a place 
you know, in, in, the, in the big picture, you know? It's having a clean workspace, having a, uh, you know, paying attention to detail when you're cleaning tubes if you still use, you know, stainless steel tubes in the shop, which I do, um, you know, and, and, and just asking a lot of questions, man. If somebody, who, whoever's doing your apprenticeship, they should be available to answer, you know, any question that you have. And if they can't, they should know where to find the answer. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, thankfully, I ask everybody I can. That's why I ask you, you know, because I get I have the luxury yeah, of being able to talk to some of the best tattooers in the world. So when I get the chance, I ask. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. And another thing, too, is I think you need to you need to, to, to either draw the way you tattoo or tattoo the way you draw. Right. Like whichever one you like better at the, at the moment, you know, uh -huh. and I think even painting a lot has has uh, has helped a lot, too. And, you know, if 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 you if you decide that you like the way you you, you know, draw versus the way you tattoo, you're going to need to adjust it either way, right? Because you'll, you'll find out when you get to that point in the tattoo industry or in your, in your tattoo career um, that maybe, you know, you'll, you'll adjust your drawing to look at it as if it's going to be a tattoo, vice versa, you know? And if you know you have to draw something tattoo-related for an appointment upcoming or whatever, you'll, you'll do the necessary adjustments bef while you're drawing it. You'll approach your... Excuse me. You'll approach your drawing completely different from from this point on, I, and you might have even have noticed that. Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I oil paint, and um, trying to trying to draw, you know, a year ago was really difficult for me because I was used to sketching for getting prepared for oil painting, and it doesn't right. translate very easily, you know, that, the way I paint to the no. way that I need to draw for a tattoo, you know. Um, Absolutely, yeah, man. Sean Barber would be the would be him, him or I mean, there's obviously so many Nico, you name it, man. There's so many guys who do incredible oil painting, and I would I would say Sean too. If you ever have a minute to talk to him, Sean Barber. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, he started before he tattooed. He was, I mean, he's got a master's degree in fine arts, and he's obviously an you know amazingly talented artist um, and tattooer. But you know, he started doing that prior to him even picking up a tattoo machine. And um, I think his transition was pretty different because when he first started tattooing, a lot of people wanted to, they wanted him to tattoo like his paintings look. And that's not what he wanted. He wanted to develop his own tattoo style, you know, com completely separate from his, his painting style. Yeah. And I think he's achieved it. I think he's achieved it great. I, uh, I have an entire sleeve of skulls and Sean was the first one that tattooed my skulls. He was the very, because I, nice. I searched Sean out. That's actually how I got to this job. S six or seven years ago, I, Sean was doing a guest spot at Off the Map. And because I was such a fan of his paintings and saw that he started tattooing, I searched him out. And it took me a couple of years to actually be able to get tattooed by him. And now he does the Montreal show every year. And I make sure I go up so I can hang out in his booth. You know, that's awesome, man. So yeah, I he's, definitely yeah, man. He's 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 become one of my close friends, man. And I, I'm I'm extremely honored to call that to even say that about him because, you know, I, I watch him, man. That guy, man. He's a he's a hard worker, man. There's there's a few people that I can again that I can say have have, have become really close friends. Sean being one of them. That and I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and name drop because it's it's I'm not I'm not that way. It just happens to the fact is that he's a good friend. Right. And like, man, that guy, man, he, he works. He's like, the first thing I see in the morning is him painting or drawing. The last thing I see at the end of the night is him tattooing or painting. And it's, it's nonstop, man. And he's, he's a machine. And the same thing can be said about, you know, a lot of people. But, you know, another, another guy that comes to mind like that is, is Grimey, man. Grime is, you know, he, one of the hardest things, and th this will go back to your, to your apprentice thing, too. You'll, you'll see, man, one of the, one of the hardest things to, to achieve in the tattoo industry, in my opinion, is, is longevity and, and, and being relative. I'm not relative to be relevant, I'm sorry, uh, in, you know, for 10 or 15 or 20 years with the way things are moving. And I think that goes back to what I said about learning the basics. That way you can adapt to whatever thing, whatever comes out. Any style that people want, you can do it, man. And I think that is the reason, one of the main reasons for, for being proficient in every kind of style, whether it's lettering, whether it's tribal, whether it's Japanese, whether it's black and gray, whether it's anything, man, 
you know, the, the, the fact that you can do it says a lot and, and, and means, means a tremendous amount for not only you, but for reflects on the person that's actually apprenticing you. But, and the fact that Grime has been tattooing for 20 plus years, 25, and still relevant this day and still pushing the envelope. That's why that dude is, in, you know, he, it's, he is, he's, he's Grime. What else can you say? Yeah, uh, Grime and Sean are driven, you know, they're driven people and the people that succeed are the ones that are that, that have that drive. And I think you're one of those people, too. I mean, you wouldn't be able to. Oh, thank you very much. If, if you weren't driven, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be where you are today. Um, I really that means a lot. I really uh, appreciate you spending some time with us today, man. It was great. Of and course, man. I'd like to have you back sometime. Maybe we'll do a discussion panel. We'll get a few more people up here and and uh, always let you, let you guys ask each other questions. Always make time for you guys, man. I love you guys to death, man. Great. Thanks a lot, BJ. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. It was great talking with you. All right, bro. My name is BJ Betts. Thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, my love for lettering has been like way before I even started tattooing. I'll try and like keep it a little simple as far as like um, terminology for, for fonts and lettering. Because I'm going to cover everything that I can, I guess, cover. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take it from here. So I approach things in a pretty simple manner. Um, when I'm laying out lettering, this is what I do. I start with a real loose sketch and just go on from there. I like to make everything flow together as much as possible. So um, let's say I have, I don't know, maybe a T and an H, for example. There's a few things that we can do. You know, obviously we can just make it like that. Yeah, it's cool, kind of boring, but I mean, you know what it is still. Maybe bring that H, if it's the end of the word, maybe. You can, you know, bring that H down, loop it around, and then maybe you can bring that H back over, and now you got that. Yeah, I think that works a lot better than this. It looks cool. You can still play around with it a little bit, clean everything up, boom, now everybody's happier and you get to do something cooler. Thank you for watching the show. It's time for me to go. It's really dark and you know, I hate riding my motorcycle in the dark, so I'm gonna go home. But I'll be back in two weeks with Jesse Smith and uh, I'm gonna try to get an in-house guest here too. If you've got any suggestions, you can uh, reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere off the map. Um, if you've got suggestions for people you want to see on the show, let us know. Uh, and there is a rumor of Drunk Critique coming back sometime this summer. Um, we're all under a lot of stress, so it could be sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, all right, see you later. Fuck your beer!